Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited. Today, I've got writer, director, producer, Wes Hurley with me. So welcome, Wes. Hey, thanks for having me, Michael. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, talk to you. That's a lot of hats. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of hats. <laughs> so I definitely want to talk about Potato Dreams of America. But before we get into that, tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, what got you into the entertainment business? You know, what made you want to uh, to write, to direct? Do you act? <laughs> I start out acting, yeah. Um, I, um, I've always wanted to make films. I've been, you know, dreaming about making films since I was a little kid. Yeah. Um, it wasn't possible where I was growing up in Russia. It just wasn't like a sustainable dream or a real dream. But when, um, I immigrated to the United States and, uh, decided to, you know, follow my heart and do what I want to do. And it took a while. It sort of, a, you know, little by little learning, uh, all of the, different parts of the craft and um, growing this sort of creative family of collaborators that I work with on different projects that takes a while but yeah sure does how uh, how old were you when you uh, came over I was 16 when I came over oh very good very good so did you do did you work on films um, during school you know did did you do theater did you know what were you doing uh, you know, as you were, while you were a teenager. I mean, in high school, I was just trying to learn English, honestly. I right. Saying, you know, I came here and I didn't really speak any English, so that was a priority. Uh, and then in college, uh, my college, University of Washington, I didn't have a film program at the time. So I, um, I majored in, double majored in visual arts, so painting and um, oh, nice. drama, theater. So I felt like those were uh, sort of adjacent to film in a way, you know, mm -hmm. painting teaches you how to compose images and drama, you know, I studied everything from like playwriting to acting. Well, yeah, that, that definitely comes in handy. So, yeah, and then uh, when I graduated, I just started, I bought my own camera on, you know, on eBay, <laughs> like a used camera. Yeah. I started shooting, like I learned my camera by shooting my friends' um, shows, like cabaret shows, theater shows, music music concerts and things and that's amazing um, yeah that's really good do you still paint i haven't painted in a long time but sometimes i draw like i draw things for friends or for like my mom or for you know for birthdays but not really <laughs> did, did i see that you had uh uh done a like a uh, a star trek short I have done this, I think it's called, is it called fan fiction kind of stuff? Where yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, so there was a big production out of uh, Seattle. Um, I think it was called Star Trek Phoenix. I Phoenix, that's the, yeah, that's what I had uh, written down. Yeah, I, I, I played an evil Romulan. It was really fun. <laughs> uh, the most fun part about it was that uh, the guy who did our makeup, Brian Sipes, he actually worked on the real Star Trek movie. Oh, very nice. Uh, it was really like he was a pro and it took, I don't know how many hours, like I probably had, I don't know, five or six lines, but it took like five hours to get me a makeup. So it was really exciting to see him at work. It's just like such experience. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Well, now you know that if you're ever, you know, looking for a Halloween costume, Romulan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if mine if i did it myself it wouldn't look nearly as good <laughs> yeah yeah it definitely helps when you got a pro helping you out with it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so i know you did um a web series called capitol hill that was pretty well received so tell me a little bit about that one yeah, so Capitol Hill was uh, is sort of my uh, baby with my um, collaborator, Waxy Moon, that you yeah. know, I've worked with a lot. And um, I've been always obsessed with like older American TV shows, like 70s shows. From yeah, me too. Like, you know, Murder, She Wrote and Colombo and Dynasty and uh, Charlie's Angels and Love Boat, yeah. all of those things. Um, and they had, you know, as a filmmaker, I've always sort of I'm interested in how things are structured and like there's a very specific structure to those shows from the 70s like yeah the way they're written the way that the music cues come in and so I wanted to create something 
uh, that's sort of both a parody and an homage to I those love that. And it's really crazy. It's sort of, I like to say, it's kind of like an Adult Swim cartoon, but with actors. Like, it's, it's very <laughs> insane. It's very colorful. It's very insane. Uh, it has elements of horror, but it's mostly like a comedy um, kind of comedy yeah, move of those shows. So I'm, I'm really, um, it's sort of my favorite projects that I've done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds awesome. So so where uh, where can we watch that one? So it was online for a while. I premiered it on Half a Cent Post, but um, right now I just sold it to the same distributor who picked up Potato Dreams of America. Very so, nice. Um, I hope they're gonna, you know, we'll see where they put it. I'm sure they put it on VOD platforms and maybe yeah. uh, Blu-ray and so on. Yeah, it's exciting. Thank yeah, it's you. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Any intention to 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 go back to that at some point? I would love to. I just, you know, if I got funding, the first two seasons I funded entirely myself. Yeah. And so all of my friends just kind of came on board and volunteered to do it. And it was quite a big undertaking because it looks like if you watch it, like it doesn't look like an amateur show. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome could... clips from I found a few clips online. It looks really well done. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I would need to find somebody who would help me fund it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I love the seventies uh, uh, angle. That's 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 really cool because that that's when I grew up. So I grew up on those uh, shows. I we just had um, Jacqueline Smith, who was one oh, of the wow. original Charlie's Angels, came on the show, um, which was awesome for me. That that's was amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, yeah. It actually turned out her son is opening up a restaurant just a few hours away from us. So I'm hopeful. That we'll be able to do something with her in person at some point. That would be a dream. That'd be uh, yeah, that was great. Nice. Yeah, it's but like, you're right. Like Those months. shows back then, they all had a very specific kind of pattern or sequence of the way that they were kind of rolled out, and and it was very almost comforting. You know, if you grew up, you know that yes. that's how everything kind of kind of worked. Uh, and we've gotten away from that a little bit. I. I think that's neat that you're going back to that a little. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good uh, word. It's comforting. I think that's what I definitely feel about those shows. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, watch a lot of uh, like TBS growing, you know, when you first okay, got over here? Like what kind of shows you have to? Well, like, it's like TBS for like when cable first came. You know when they when they first came out with cable, TBS was the one that showed all the '70s shows. Okay, I mean I don't because I watched some of them in Russia. You know the ones that made it over to Russia. Oh, very nice. Yeah, like Love Boat, um, like you know a lot of those shows. But then, yeah, some of them I, I started to catch up here, actually, like on DVD because I'm so happy that a lot of those older <laughs> shows came out on DVD, so I could like kind of binge them. You know. Yeah, and they're not real expensive now. No. Yeah, you, know, you, you don't have to spend a fortune to get those because it's been, if you can believe it, it's been 50 years. Yeah, crazy. We, we just watched, I mean, it's sort of on the cusp of a late 70s, early 80s, but binge watched Magnum P.I., which was just <laughs> so fun. It's a great show. Yeah. <laughs> well, they remade it now. I know. I don't want to. Yeah, it's not the that. same. I don't watch that one. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> All right. So we, we have to talk about the new project. So the new project, Potato Dreams of America. So tell me a little bit about it. Because if I if I remember right, it started as a short, but now it's like a feature length. You know, tell me a little bit about that. What's that about? Yeah, so uh, Potato Dreams of America, it's a, it's a dark um, comedy. It's very yes. autobiographical. Um, it's basically about me growing up in the Soviet Union, like near the end of Soviet Union, and then coming over to the U.S. as an immigrant with my um, mom who became a male or a bride. And then oh, okay. <laughs> a lot of twists and turns uh, that happen throughout the movie. And at the end, there's a huge, huge kind of twist. But yeah, so it's very, it's autobiographical, um, but the tone of it is very comedic, and um, I... Yeah, it sounds terrific. Thank you. Yeah, I, I wrote it about eight years ago, and it's been a struggle to make it in terms of, like, you know, raising funds to make it, so um, halfway through the process, we got 
a little grant and I ended up making a short film, a little yeah. potato, which was a doc, just a kind of talking heads doc, and then a VR piece. And those, both of those pieces are basically covering the same stories, but I, I thought that you know, I could leverage those short pieces to right. help me get the feature made. And it, and it really worked out because the shorts did really, really well. And we won at South by Southwest and went around all, you know, all around the world. And so it, it raised a profile for the project and the story and helped me, ultimately helped me raise money for the feature. Yeah. Well, so, so was your mom becoming a bride? Was that how you got to the States? Yep. Yeah, that's amazing. I didn't. I mean, you hear that 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 that's a thing, but how yes. does that work? I mean, I mean, we was that was that like an online thing, or how does that how this does was, that work? This was pre-online. Um, you know, they um, my mom was in like a sort of a catalog. You know, this is like pre-internet, but it kind of yes. is similar to pre-internet. You, you people would pay and have a profile with the photo in this catalog and. American men would have their own version and the women in Russia would have their own version and then they would start communicating. So my mom and this man were um, writing letters to each other for many years. And then he came visit, uh, he came to visit us in Russia for like a month. And then she came to visit him in the States and they got married and then she brought me with That's her. That's amazing. It's, it's kind of like a, a dating site now, but it's pre years. Like, yeah, it's exactly like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah, that's pretty neat. So, Russia, when you were when you were growing up, was it very different from when you came over to here? You know, was it like a stark different? Was it just a little bit different? You know, what was that like? Yeah, it was like coming to a different planet. Honestly, it felt yeah. very very different. Um, we, um, you know, we watched some American films, so we had some like idea, right? Stuff, but, um, but when we came to the states, it was even better. I mean, I just remember telling people, it's like, yeah, it's even better than in the movies, um, and different in every way. Like, I can't even, you know, there's like too many ways in which it was. Everything was different. People are different. Just everything about your lifestyle and how you carry on with your days <laughs> yeah yeah well i can imagine yeah i can imagine uh, so i literally felt like we're you know fell on a different planet yeah yeah that has to be like culture shock wise especially if you don't speak the language yeah i mean that had to be rough when you were younger it, it was really exciting because like our biggest dream came true we both really wanted to come to the states so it was like a positive, exciting thing, but it was definitely a challenging and the language barrier was challenging because, you know, especially for my mom, she was a doctor in Russia. So she was really highly educated. Oh, yeah. Um, and when she came here, she was basically like a child again, you know, like she couldn't communicate. She communicated yeah. at the level of a child. Um, so, and for me, you know, like when you're a teenager, you're already pretty awkward and right yeah that's not it's not a very smooth time anyway <laughs> socially uncomfortable and so to be like a teenager and not speak the language that was really um it was challenging but it was also super exciting because we were just so happy and felt so lucky to be here yeah yeah do you still have family friends back in russia nope nope i mean there's you know there's like blood family that i never was close to but right yeah. Yeah, it has to be. I could see that where it could be very exciting, but also a little bit hard, I think, uh, yeah. you know, coming in and kind of uh, changing everything like that. But that's yeah. What a great story, though. And I definitely could see where that might lend to some comedy. Yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of sort of language comedy, of you know, sort of misunderstanding language, language misunderstandings and things like that. Who um, who did you get to play you in the film? So there's a there's two versions of me in the film. There's a, a little kid who plays me in Russia, Hirsch Powers, uh, brilliant kid. I think is going to be a big star at some point. Yeah. Uh, and a teenager slash young young man version of me is Tyler Bocock. So both of them we 
uh, found through audition process in Seattle. And I was really, that was a really nice surprise because I was really honestly um, afraid to work with kids because I never right. worked with kids. And I was like, what is that going to be? Am I going <laughs> to be able to find somebody who's even good, you know, any good? Yeah. Sometimes you see big Hollywood movies where kid actors just are horrible. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And, and you know, some of them can act really well, but are just nightmares off the set. And sometimes it's vice versa. They're pretty nice yeah. kids, but they're not very good actors. So, yeah, if you find one that can, you know, do both, that that's great. Yeah. So you, uh, you, you hear that and it's intimidating. So but we were really lucky. We found both of them. Through audition process, they were wonderful, extremely talented. Um, the camera loves them, you know. It's just really, yeah. Luxury. Did uh, did you see some of yourself in their acting? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, both of them. I mean, they're sort of meant to be really different in the film because I, I made the Russian half of the film and American half of the film very, very different. Yeah, to sort of convey this idea that when you come to a different country, you become a different person, you know, and and age wise, they're also very different. So Hirsch is sort of more gregarious and like fun and um, almost more comfortable in his own body because he's a kid, you know. Right, right. Versus Tyler, Tyler's version of me is like that teenage version that's really, you know, kind of introverted uncomfortable um insecure and yeah they they both do it pretty well and tyler had to learn a russian accent which he didn't have he didn't know oh before. yeah he did beautifully so really proud of the work you did did you um did you have to work you know closely with him to help him with the accent or did you bring somebody else in for that i brought in um i brought in a, a, a dialect coach but to be honest like we couldn't you know, we didn't have a ton of time with the dialect coach. And yeah. He was really fast. He was really, he just has a knack for wow. it. Yeah, it's terrific. And I was looking at um, your cast list, really good cast. So congratulations on that, because I know that's not easy putting together that uh, that type of quality of cast. Thank you. Yeah, we have some really cool people. A lot of really awesome local actors from Seattle, but also some name actors from that people were learning yeah. like some other things. Yeah, yeah, really uh, strong. So, so what what does potato dreams mean? <laughs> so potato <laughs> is potato is a nickname um, for my character in the film. Oh, very good. Okay, so potato dreams of America. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So dreams is a verb in this case, right? Yeah. Because uh, some people think it's potato dreams, like. <laughs> well, so was that a nickname you had in Russia, or one you got when you came here? Uh, that was like one of many nicknames that my mom had for me, and I just picked one for the film because I thought it just yeah, I love that. the tone of the film is sort of whimsical and comedic, and so I thought it would be yeah. fun to call. Yeah, yeah, that's terrific. Who um, who did you get to play uh, or to portray your mother? Um. Two amazing actresses, Sarah Barbieri um, played the younger version in Russia, and Mariah C. Kaminsky played her in the States, and they're both yeah. really, really accomplished actresses. I think Sarah can be seen on some big Showtime show pretty soon. I'm forgetting the name of it. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They have definitely are kind of accomplished. So that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's really great. Did you run... Any surprises, like during the process of putting this together, did you run into anything that caught you off guard? Uh, I mean, there's something every day, right? It's just like, <laughs> working with so many people. There's always, <laughs> yeah, there's always something. Um, it was pretty, I mean, I think production was pretty smooth. Like I said, raising money to go into production was really challenging mm -hmm. a long time, but production itself was really fun and went, pretty smoothly um, I mean yeah like there were so many joys as part of the production like Dan Loria who plays my stepfather you know he's a very uh, iconic dad from the wonder years yeah uh, yeah he's, really good actor he's worked in theater a lot which I didn't you know I didn't because I know him from tv but he's like his first love is theater 
right so he just had on set he just had so many stories working in theater with so many like iconic people which was just amazing just being around him and you know having him talk about like Peter Folk and Cary Grant and like Sinatra and all those people. yeah 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 that's pretty neat yeah that's pretty great yeah especially if you're kind of a tv and film buff that would be awesome yeah yeah yeah, that's uh, that's pretty great. So, was it difficult, you know, going from writing the script to directing it? Um, not not really. I mean, to me, it always feels sort of like as part of the same thing because I I direct my own scripts and I yeah, and I um, write for myself. So, like for me, writing is the first step in directing. Like when I write, I already know what everything's gonna look like, what the actors sure. are gonna be like, what the sets are going to be like where i'm going to cut where you know so it's um it really feels like a continuous sort of thing for me because i also edit it you know so it's all sort of all one you really do wear a lot of hats one process (laughs) yeah it's uh, pretty great will we see you in a cameo no not in this one (laughs) how did you avoid that if i was doing that i'd have to put myself in there somewhere You know, I think because it's such a big undertaking, this project, and it already, uh, like you're saying, wearing so many hats, I I don't know how many, how people do that, like when, when actors, especially when they play the lead, you know, just like, how do you do that? Where do you find the time? It's so much already in your head when you're directing and trying to, you know, coordinate all of those people. Do you show, at the end of the movie, do you show pictures of the people that it's based on yeah there's a, all the main characters you see the real pictures i realized i have to do it because i think people even though i put in the beginning of the film based on a true story i think yeah. the story is so outrageous in many ways that people kind of still don't it doesn't quite register or sink yeah, in yeah well and, and as, as a fan we love to see that you know you want to see the real people yeah so it's, it's it's fun to remind people at the end that it's like oh it's actually an you know it's all real people and this thing yeah. actually happened yeah it's pretty uh, great what kind of response have you received so far it's been great all of the you know we started we premiered at south by southwest but it was digital so it's kind of like the first few festivals were digital festivals right. so it was, it's always tricky you know to gauge the response and then um you know a few months into the 2021 festival started to be um physical. in person again yeah and then, uh, our distributor put us in theaters so we had a, like a theatrical run in nine major cities and so i got to see it with different audiences and it's always amazing like audiences are very engaged they laugh and the right things they uh, gasp a few times <laughs> it is always fun you know um um so it's been good. It's I'm 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 so happy that we got to experience it with the audience before going to video. Yeah, that's terrific. That's terrific. So where where can we watch Potato Dreams of America? So right now it's on VOD and all the main platforms like Apple TV yeah. and Amazon and so on. It's on DVD also through all of the main um, merchants. And uh, the most exciting thing for me is the special edition Blu-ray coming out on Vinegar Syndrome, Ooh. which is. Um, label that i've been like um a mega fan of for a long time myself so um there's a beautiful special edition blu-ray that has a ton of special features uh original artwork and so on that's uh exclusive to vinegar syndrome.com but the blu-ray you can get anywhere Uh, uh, but the dvd you can get anywhere really yeah yeah it's terrific yeah i think we're going to watch it our plan is to to watch it here in the studio. We got we've got right. enough space for fifteen or twenty people, and so we like to do those kind of premieres. So we'll we'll invite some family and friends over, and then we'll all watch yeah. it together. So it should be fun. I'll try I'll try to take some pictures and send those to you. Nice. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to see that. Yeah, yeah, it should be good. We'll get the uh, get the popcorn out, and of course, you know, it's we have more of an adult theater, so we've got a you know we've got a bar. You know, <laughs> yeah, no, so it should be a fun time. <laughs> I mean, more and more theaters do that. Yeah, like, you know, we live next to um, was it Regal? I think it's a Regal chain, and they now have a fancy bar in the theater. It's like 
the new thing, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of neat. It's kind of well with the changing landscape. You know, it's it's so different how we're, you know, uh, kind of consuming movies now. I'm sure they're trying to look for new ways to make up some of the revenue and stuff. So yeah, yeah makes sense. That's smart. No. Very good. So what's next, Wes? What's you know what's coming after this one's done? What can we look for for, uh, for you to do next? Yeah, I, I'm really excited about horror. Like that's my favorite genre is horror movies. So I am sort of exploring, you know, finding the right script or writing something myself that will be a horror film. Yeah. So are you now I gotta ask you if you want me to watch it, it can be scary, but if it's really gory, then I, I have trouble with that. <laughs> I'm big chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So what kind of what kind of uh, horror writer are you? Do you have a you know? Do you also pattern after like seventies and eighties for horror, or, or are you more? You know, for, for horror, I just love everything. I just love horror so much. So I like everything from like black and white, like Bela Lugosi, Dracula. Oh, yeah. Like um, really graphic seven. You know, seventies horror was really graphic and gory and kind of yeah, it stuck, was you know out there. Uh, psychological horror, like cheesy horror, like anything. I, I just love horror. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Yeah, you I'm not a zombie fan. Movie. I have to say, like, zombie is one. Oh. I feel like zombie has been like overdone. I'm not, There's a lot of zombie stuff out zombie. there. We need, you but, need to think like werewolf. You know, we could use some more werewolf stuff. We, vampire stuff's always good. Yeah. You know, or you, you know, you can do, there's obviously there's tons of others, but if you're going to go classic monsters, yeah, that's where, that's where I go werewolf or although a really good mummy movie would be good. I mean, we had Brendan Fraser, which that movie was great, but that was a long oh, time great. ago. Tom Cruise's movie didn't ago. quite didn't quite do it. So. It's true. I yeah. just I just rewatched the original uh, you know Boris Karloff one. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, and it's, love it's, it. A lot of it still works. Yeah, and then um, the second one, Hand of Mummy, I think it's called. Uh, that's from like thirty nine or whatever. It's you know came soon after Boris Karloff version. I mean, the mummy in that is actually legit scary. It's yeah, it is. Amazing. Yeah, it's I mean, amazing it's, what it they can really see. slowly. <laughs> yeah, that's like the only downside. But the actual makeup, I was really impressed. I was like, "Wow, this movie is like what now? Uh, like eighty? No, yeah, about eighty years old. Eighty years old, but the the makeup is really impressive. Yeah, they used to show when I was growing up. They would on Halloween. They would show those classic monster movies um, all night long. And and so I would stay up until I just passed out, you know, just watching all that Boris Karloff, Bella Lugosi, you know, Lon Chaney, all yes. those. Vincent Price was in some of them, you know. It's just, oh, I love Vincent Price. Yeah, and those are just for me. I just absolutely love those movies, you know, because they were scary and they catch you off guard, um, but not too not too gory. Or if it was gory, it was in black and white, so it wasn't too bad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well Wes thank you so much for taking a little bit of time this has been the best I can't I can't wait we're hoping to uh to catch it uh this weekend and get everybody uh hopefully we can pull everybody together and watch it because I wanted to watch it like a week ago and uh we couldn't get everybody together so so I'm hoping this Saturday well, let me we'll know what this. you think yeah I, I, yeah. I hear what you think yeah it's going it's going to be uh great I think it's such a, a terrific story it's a it's a uh it, at, at times just reading the description you're like and there's no way that's real <laughs> but yeah i guess i just i can't wait to uh to check it out so um before i let you go though uh, a couple of things you know anything else that you're working on anything that we can keep an eye out for Nothing, you know, I'm excited to see what where Capitol Hill comes out because I think that's going to yeah. be soon. Um, yeah, it's a good one. But yeah, that's it. You just need to write more stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got plenty of time for that. Plenty of time. Um, okay, last thing before I let you go, you know, where can we follow you, uh, look for you on social media? Yeah, so on, uh, on Instagram, it's Potato Hurley at potato hurley <laughs> um the film instagram is 
Potato Dreams Films. Okay. And Capitol Hill is Capitol Hill TV. So uh, whatever, wherever we're going to end up with Capitol Hill, I'll post that obviously on. Um, yeah. On yeah, I'm page. excited for that one. I, I hope you get that worked out soon because that sounds right up my alley. Thank you. Yeah, I hope yeah. you like it. Yeah, it's terrific. Well, Wes, you have to come back next time you have a, uh, you know, something uh, getting ready to come out. You got to come back and talk to us. I would again. love that. I would love that. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. Hold on one second. All right. So that was the talented Wes Potato Hurley. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and I hope you'll check out Potato Dreams of America. I can't uh, can't wait to uh, to watch it. What a unique story. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited for that one. Hope you are too. If you haven't done so yet, we could use the help with our YouTube channel, MeisterCon Pod. You know, it, unfortunately, you need subscribers to continue to bring in great guests. You know, we've done 410 or so of these episodes, and we're really proud of the, the uh, quality of interviews that we're able to, uh, to put together for you. You can help us with that just by subscribing. It's free, gives you access to all of those episodes. I know you'll find a ton of people that you really, really like. So please help us out. You can find those episodes, all of them, in addition to the video on YouTube, you can find the video and the audio on our website, meistercon.com. There's a uh, fun, geeky, well-written blog that Brett puts together. Uh, if we're doing anything in studio, like watching Potato Dreams of America, if we're going on location, if we're covering a convention, anything like that, it'll be on the website, meistercon.com. So thank you guys so much. Until next time, bye, everybody.